Welcome or welcome back to our pod crew. We are currently in the Bay Islands of Honduras on the island of Utila. Last week, we got to know the charming town on the East Harbor. And covered places to eat, beautiful beaches to see, great places to meet some locals, have a cocktail, and watch the sunset. We also went for some spectacular snorkeling, and hopefully there's plenty more of that to come. We've been sitting here having our coffee in the cockpit this morning, and this beautiful spotted ray has been just swimming around for like the past 15 minutes. But this week, we're renting a golf cart and our friends Bill and Joanne are showing us other parts of the island. <laughs> and we're taking you with us because unless you have the amazing fortune of knowing Bill and Joanne as well or someone else local that can take you around, there are backcountry roads and little hidden water caves and beaches that you can only reach by parking in someone's driveway that I just don't think we would have figured out how to do this trip just by looking at Google Maps. But we're gonna share our favorite places with you so that hopefully you can do it all too. We had no idea there were cenotes. Cenote comes from a Mayan word that I can't pronounce, but it's a natural water hole that gives access to spectacular caverns filled with fresh water on the surface and salt water deeper. They're formed by limestone collapsing, creating underground river and cave systems. You park next to the power station for the island. I recommend wearing shoes, at least sandals, as you walk over these crazy formations of what I believe is ancient coral. But it is sharp. Ouch! My heel keeps coming off my flip flop and finding a pointy. See, there's bats in there. Oh, see the bat? There's a bird. There's a bird right oh, there. Yeah, look at how cute. Yeah, but there's also bats in here. Oh, there she goes. There's also a tricky ladder that looks a little sketchy, but didn't give us any trouble. He needs to swim though, right? Does he want to swim? I'm sure he would love to. Look. Jumping. Good jumping. <laughs> okay, Jimmy. Go get I know, it's cold, right? Isn't it great though? Oh, nice though. That, so this is fresh, you think, Thanks. huh? Because that's the first fresh water on my head on my hair in three weeks. <laughs> I know, in weeks. <laughs> it's funny. Hee hee, we had gotten an early start today because Haido and I don't like to leave our dogs in the middle of the day on the boat. So by 10.30 in the morning, we had already gone by Scott's Driftwood Beach, Iron Shore Beach, the Freshwater Caves or Cenotes, and Playa Platinum. which was a good point to go back towards town where we spent the middle of the day with our dogs, left Mowgli at home and brought Pearl with us for the afternoon adventure. <laughs> There is an incredible dog and cat rescue here on the island that Joanne volunteers at. So we stopped by to say hi and check it out real quick.
We'll come back soon and take the dogs for an outing. Next stop was the Utila Chocolate Factory. I'd seen signs around town and actually bought the chocolate at the supermarket, and I'd made a mental star on the map as a place to check out. But I was really pleasantly surprised to find that it exceeded my expectations. It's really well put together with a really cozy and colorful setting. An introduction to chocolate making was quick and informative. I genuinely wanted one of everything in their gift shop area. We tried the homemade liqueurs and hands down the highlight of the visit is the homemade brownies and homemade ice cream. Pause the video. Can you believe we forgot to film our brownie ice cream the other day? I was sitting here editing the footage and there's a gaping hole. We're gonna take one for the team, we're gonna go back and we're gonna have another brownie and ice cream. I'm sure I won't mind too much. We really should have walked up here, but we didn't realize how far it was. So we ended up taking a tuk-tuk, which was about $2. And now we're gonna walk and hopefully find the Iguana Sanctuary. <laughs> Oh, cerrado. Uh oh. We're just gonna check and see if it's true. Are you guys closed? Hola. Hola. Están cerrados. Oh, okay. El rotolo en frente dice cerrado. <laughs> okay, so you can come when it's. Sometimes the visitor center is closed, but you can still come and either do a self-guided tour or we're gonna do a walking tour with a girl that's gonna show us around. Bienvenidos a Utila Isla de la Bahía y los invito a visitar la Fundación Iguana Station. Son bienvenidos. So they have these swamper iguanas that are native and only found here in Utila. So they're not found in Roatan, they're not found in any other part of Honduras, just here. But unfortunately, they're in danger of extinction. And there was a couple reasons, principally the loss of their habitat, the pollution, they lay their eggs in the sand, as we saw in these neat egg laying boxes. And then really sadly, a family brought over a pair of raccoons as pets. And those two raccoons produced a problem here on the island where the raccoons are eating all of these rare iguanas. And so now they're having to hunt down the raccoons, apparently. The other reason that they're going extinct is because people do hunt them to eat them. But that is very illegal here. And so I don't think people do that anymore. This sign is saying that the punishment for the first time is a million limpira fine per iguana they catch you with but they have a successful breeding program there right now she said they had over 75 different iguanas and we met swampy who is a local celebrity he was born there at the foundation and he's now 30 years old and so as he ages he will be their benchmark for how long these iguanas can live because they don't know so she was saying there's seven different types of iguanas here in honduras the most common one that you see are called these Highlanders and here they are all over the place. Incredibly, that whole nice tour of like 20 minutes is based on donations. So as travelers, we believe strongly that where we put our money really makes a difference. Okay, back to the golf cart tour. Now that we're in the center of the island, it's just up and over to the next area we're heading, which is called Pumpkin Hill. because from sea, the hillside looks round like a pumpkin, I guess. Hi. I thought I'd been transported to Hawaii, 
It was just breathtaking. During our time at the different beaches, we had definitely noticed a lot of trash that washes up from other places. It's not something you want to see, but what you do want to see is this great group of students for their senior project, cleaning the beaches. And in fact, there's a great effort made at keeping the beaches clean and tidy. Of course, we daydreamed for a minute about moving to this beachside home which we found out later was listed for just under 700,000 US dollars, which seems like a steal to me. Alas, we're not ready to put down roots and buy a home at this time, but we were ready for some bubbles and a swim. This has been such a rewarding day and this is such a nice way to cap it off. We're over at Pumpkin Hill. And this is just gorgeous. <laughs> Champagne is coming out. Ready? Ta-da! Ready. Woo -hoo. Gonna save that for our art. Ta-da! Happy day for us. My hands are super dirty. I had to wrestle around getting the... Oh, it's pink! <laughs> oh, it's pink champagne on ice! But we don't have ice, though. We did have ice, but... I don't have ice anymore. Thank you. Woohoo! To our great life, girl. Happy day for us. Cheers! Cheers! Love you. Oh, yeah, nice one. Oh, yes. One of the last stops of the day was up to the island cemetery. A lot of the families that live here to this day have been here since the 17 and 1800s. And sure enough, we were able to find remarkably old tombstones. The cemeteries are a little sad, especially when you see someone who passed away young. But for some reason, sometimes I enjoy visiting for the historic aspect of them. Now we were off to have a sunset beer at this great beach bar. I don't dream of having a job, but if I did, I would want a little beach shack like this. I'd serve fried fish tacos and cold beer. And the setting would look something like this as well. <laughs> and to wrap up our amazing day, we went for the really inexpensive local food of Baleadas. These great tortillas with beans, avocado, and then whatever else you want to add, sometimes meat, egg, vegetables, the pupusas blew us away and these donuts are banana based and so from what i'm told they're actually a vegan donut There's definitely more than one place to rent quads and golf carts. We went right to the place on the main street here. Grab one of these maps, they're very handy. They offer two different prices. So you can get the older golf carts for less expensive. But we tried two different ones and didn't have any success with them. One of them we had to come back a few minutes after leaving. The other one we could tell right away it wasn't gonna work. So we ended up going with the more expensive, newer golf carts. If you need bigger golf carts, I'd come over here. Just up the street from the municipal dock down there. Also, maybe if you're only four, but you don't want somebody riding backwards. Now we're gonna go check out a bakery that we heard has really great bread and treats, including cinnamon rolls. So we're walking up the street from the municipal dock back there, away from the water. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know more of Utila Island with us. Thank you for being here. We've got lots more adventures in store. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's free and it really helps our channel. And we'll see you next time. Wow, so we have Damn you!
a good diver. <laughs> oh no! It was beautiful! Big salty kisses from the pod crew. Mm -hmm.